Okay, so nowadays, uh, uh, you see a lot of Tesla, 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 Tesla. Suddenly, this guy, he's a trader, right? Trader, you know. Suddenly say that, wow, Tesla is a fundamentals, is good, la, and all that shit, la, blah, 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 blah. Okay? So, I was a bit like, huh? Right? Suddenly, this guy is a trader. Suddenly, talk fundamentals about the uh, Tesla. Then I was like, hmm, nah. Okay, so you must understand uh, if you are coming from a trading standpoint or investing standpoint, uh, right? So this guy is a trading background. Suddenly he talk about Tesla as though it's gonna be the future. So he's uh, becoming like the chicken genius, the old style. Uh, okay, now what do I think about Tesla? It's a good company, right? Uh, the fundamentals is not bad. If China is banned uh, by the US, so basically Chinese cars are banned by the US, I think surely it'll be one of the best American EV producers. Lah. So it really uh, uh, depends a lot on uh, Chinese uh, EVs being banned into USA. <coughs> okay, so... Uh, What do you notice when you look at Tesla? Okay. So Tesla is in a downwards pattern, right? But there is this pattern uh, that you all can see, right? That is very nice. Up, down, up, down, up, then go down. It's not overshot, I think, right? Then go up again, then go down. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So it seems to be going down, uh, the trend, okay? Why is it going down? Because it's overvalued, uh, right? Okay, it's overvalued, right? It's overvalued, it's still not cheap yet. Uh, but this guy is, I think, I don't know, uh, maybe he's advocating it as a trade. Lah, okay, so as a trade, is it worthwhile? Yes, if it keeps up into this. Uh, so we look at this, it bounces here. It means that the support is quite strong. We think that it's going to go up. Maybe go up to somewhere about a $200 handle. Lah. So I'm saying that, yeah, it's possible that trade can happen. Tesla can still be going up to $200. Okay? Understand or you all? Okay? Now, on the other hand, on the other hand, we also can draw a line from here to here and say that, hey, maybe not, you know, maybe Tesla is going down. Look at this, look at the lines. We think that Tesla is in downtrend. Uh, we think it's going to break downwards, right? Okay? So, from both sides of the story, there is always uh, either one or both, right? So what to do now? If you are a trader, what would you know? Well, if you are bullish on Tesla, you think it's going to bounce back. Usually, you want to put a buy somewhere here, right? At 160 and put some stop losses below. Maybe a $5 stop loss or something, right? And you take profit somewhere here lo, if you are really bullish, right? Or maybe if you are somewhere bullish somewhere here lah, one six three or that, yeah. Okay, so you put a stop loss lah. I mean, this is not really a rocket science or anything lah, guys. You won't become. You don't really need to become a genius to know all this. You don't need to know the Tesla product and all that things, right? We are trading. We are gambling on the market uh, based on the charts. Okay. So I think all these uh, what uh, AI bots la FSD is just trying to bamboozle you la, trying to smoke you, you know, trying to con you, you know, all these kind of uh, future expectations. Uh, this is the con la, you know, you right. I say that uh, next time uh, Toyota will make a car, then the car can become human and help you like an Android like that, like a transformer, huh? In the future, I say in the future, bro, not now. Yeah, in the future. Okay, so I noticed Tesla, the, the, the guys, the bulls, they always use that, that, that method. In the future, I never say now, in the future. Oh. Then I also can say Toyota later, the car become a robot, help you with housework. Oh. Become your assistant, become your wife. Okay. So at the end of the day, uh, okay. In the future, it's still in the future lah. Oh, still speculation lah. 
your job is to ascertain how likely is that future. Tesla is FSD. What level is it now? Go and research. Go and research. Go and research. I bluff you for what? Later you all say I bluff you. Right. You all say the FSD later is going to uh, be amazing and all that. You all say don't need to use LiDAR. Uh, sensors can uh, go beyond FS autonomy level 2. Fact is that Tesla wasn't able to go autonomy level 2 without using when they, have, when they don't have LiDAR. Even the thing goes to level 3 or level 4, how long do you think it's going to be take, take to approve? Right? Okay? So if you believe in this kind of future investing, right, then Tesla will be what? 1 million uh, per stock. Right? Because later, oh guys, uh, Tesla, huh, uh, later he the, he's going to make phones, but the phone is using the chip in our brain. Then later, the chip in our brain make us become what? Sup give us psychic superpower. Can move things around. Right? Then later, we become uh, mutants like Superman, like that. Uh, they can do a lot of shit, blah, 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 blah. And this is what I see, you know, a lot of the Tesla bulls. Huh? I'm sorry, but yeah. Okay, I see a lot of Tesla bulls becoming like that. I, I do not doubt la, that you know in the eventually in the future there is definitely going to be FSD. Cars are gonna be self-driven. Yeah, cars can fly in the future. Yes. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Tesla can be the energy uh, that one in the future. Yeah, of course. I think there's a possibility of that happening, right? Uh, Tesla can make uh, the robot, then the robot can become your assistant. Yeah, yeah, of course, I believe. I believe in the future. Okay? I believe so in the future. Right? So what does that mean? It means, right, I, I, I don't want to be, I, I don't want to stoke too much into the future. I want to look at now and the near future. What is the near future I see? Right? I don't see it yet in Tesla. Li. Right now, in the near future, I see. I think that Tesla has a lot of competitors coming in uh, to the market. Okay, that's one. Uh, two is I think Tesla no need to cut the price so much lah, because it won't be able to compete by cutting prices anymore. It has to compete in improving the quality now. After this, in other words, it increase the price but give better service and all that. That's the way for Tesla to compete. Not, not by cutting price and then uh, cutting price. Then you want to compete with the other automakers. Okay. Now, what do I think of the near term uh, profitability? It's going to be like shit lah, definitely, because there's so many competition that comes in, right? But if it survives lah, it will be not bad lah. Okay. If it survives, it will be not bad lah. That's what I think. Okay. That's number one. Number two, what do I think of the FSD, the AI? Actually, FSD is somewhat of an AI la, because you are actually using artificial intelligence to drive, right? To operate a, a, a vehicle. And I think there needs to be some sort of uh, safety standards la, before it can be implemented. La. Safety standards, law and stuff like that, right? Uh, from there, we don't know when is it going to come. La. But one year, two years is too soon, man. Right? Even the technology for Tesla is not there yet. Okay? So I'm just saying as it is. La. Okay? I'm not trying to smoke you all. So I'm giving you the realistic that one. La. Okay? Now, what do I think of FSD once it comes out? Well, uh, how do I think about it? La? Uh... Can FSD replace human labor? The answer is it depends on the labor. Like is the labor cost cheap? If the labor cost expensive? Uh, if the labor cost is expensive, yeah, it can replace human labor. But if the labor cost is cheap, then it, then uh, just hire a driver. Then people will just hire a driver and uh, the thing move the, drive the thing around. Uh, right? Okay. So, 
ultimately at the end of the day, right now, okay, what do I think is going to happen? Well, I am neutral on Tesla as a trade. Nah. I, if it's me, I will wait low, right? I will wait low, I will wait because it's approaching this wedge, right? If this breaches upwards, then I buy low, right? If this keeps going down, I, 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 I wait and see lah, okay? In fact, if this breaches down, uh, I might, I might, I might go on. The sh I might, I might short this, you know. Okay, because if this breaches down this line, I think most likely it's gonna touch here. Okay, hundred twenty there, I think it's gonna be reachable, right? That's what I see, lo. I mean, as a trader, that's what I see, lah. I'm not a uh, fundamental investor. Will I buy Tesla? I will buy whatever, lah. I'm a trader, but. This is a trading uh, mental. This is a trading uh, mentality, right? You want me to trade? I trade. You want me to do that one? I that I do whatever. Okay. So for me, it's not really I hate Tesla or anything la. It's more like, hey guys, uh, we have to be objective. This is a bit overpriced. Okay. If it's cheap, maybe I buy la. But if it's a bit too expensive, uh, maybe not. Okay. So. Going by the, I think Kelvin also said that right in the future, the AI bots, the FSD, and all that stuff is gonna come in. Yeah, I guess in the future lah. But the problem is how long will it take? You see, right? We don't know how long will it take, and will it be the one that is successful? Not right. I also don't know. Okay, so for me is, I don't need to smoke people lah. No, I just say I don't know. Don't know is best. No stress. If you say you don't know, you don't stress. Huh? If you say you know later your 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 that one wrong, then how you die? Haha. <laughs> okay. This is a Tesla. I, is it gonna go up or go down? I don't know. If it breaches upwards, I'm gonna buy lah. If it doesn't breach upwards, I'm not gonna buy, man. Right. So this one get got two possible trades lah. You 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 don't be calm gong lah and go on one trade only. You must see the situation, how it, it develops, uh, then you follow what, what happens. Uh, right? This, 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 this guy, I think he come gong, he go one direction. Don't. Okay? As a trader, you must be very flexible. If it goes down, you must be prepared to short. If it goes up, you must be prepared to go long. Uh, right? This kind of thing, uh, I've seen him already. Uh, wow. I, 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 you cannot like that, you know, as a trader. This is the wrong mentality as a trader. Okay. As a trader, I think this one is 50-50. La. I, 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 I wouldn't go all in. La. Okay. But uh, you ask me to bet, I would say got possibility touch here, then go up. There's a possibility. You say, what is the case for the long? Yeah, can. You touch here, then you push up. Right. Possible. Is it possible not, Robert? Yeah, of course it's possible. You touch this, this resistance here, then you go up. Possible, you know. Right. Cause it has been happening uh, ever since uh, last year lo, uh, since July last year. So I think it can happen again uh, touch it and go back again. I think I think it's possible uh. Doesn't mean that it's impossible. Okay. Citibank, I think a lot. Somebody like Citibank a lot. Citibank, Citigroup. Now Citibank is still in an upwards trend lah, uh, right? And this one I already mentioned uh, many times. Uh, uh, the resistance is going to be felt here, la. Not, not, not exactly here. Here, very, not very low. Uh, the resistance is quite low. Here is where you're going to feel it, la. Seventy dollars. Okay. Another method you can ascertain this is you check the distance between the moving averages. Why? What? What does that mean, uh? You go. You every day you take a look at the moving average, then you measure, lo. Right. You measure it, right? You measure the distance. You measure the distance. You measure the distance. The moment the distance falls down uh, by 10% or 15%, uh, let's say the distance was 10 and then it goes down to uh, 9, right? Or 8.5, okay? I think that is the very near the top. You have to sell it, okay? How do I know this? Okay, how do I know this? Uh, this is what I ascertained from the previous high, la, basically. We always look at the past patterns. Uh. 
we see the distance up, 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 the distance going up, going up, going up. Uh. Then the moment is at the top, uh, the distance to slowly starts to uh, shorten between the moving averages. Look at the lines, don't look at the candle, uh, the distance between the lines, the black line and this green line. You notice not? when it's near the top, uh, the distance is starting to come down. It's narrowing uh, the distance. The moment it narrows to a certain, then you know, ah, the top is near, just sell. Don't need to be so greedy. Right? For me, it's like that. Okay? Uh, now, why is the, if you ask me about fundamentals, why is Citigroup, why is all the banks going up? Do you all have any, any, any explanation for this? No? Okay? So the explanation is very simple. They must be holding on to a lot of toxic shit. <laughs> right? The Bank of America and all that. Right? Because if we think about it, interest rate na, when they are going to cut, is going to hurt their name, net interest margin. Logically, it's like that. La. I mean, you think about it. La. I mean, as a bank, right? You want higher interest rates. Okay? Now, you the why the thing go up because they were holding a lot of uh, government bonds la, or bets uh, or, or bets right that they made last time during the low uh, ultra low interest rate period na, 2020 2021 na. okay and I think seeking alpha has an article on this la. Uh, it's by Waiko researcher I, 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 I like the Waiko researcher because he give me facts la, instead of nonsense la. I hate this kind of I, I, I hate nonsense you know uh, seeking alpha be careful got a lot of nonsense la. I think Waiko researcher that's his name yeah, why co researcher? He made an article about the uh, losses and the banks. Uh. You all can take a look at it, right? Uh, this guy is a bankruptcy specialist. Uh. Okay, he's a bankruptcy specialist. When the thing go bankrupt, he follow the thing. Uh, he see then what happened, this and that. Okay. Sometimes wrong, sometimes correct lah. Indonesia energy is still trading with the meme trading. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> where is the where he made an article about banks? Ah, it was really good, man. Shit, don't tell me he take it off. Ah. the article was amazing. Ah, the banks. Ah. Basically, he, he tell you the losses on the banks, you know. Uh, he tell us the losses on the banks. This one hold how much, that one lost how much, that one lost how much, that one lost how much. Don't have idea. She took it out. Uh. Bloody hell. What a waste, man. It was very good. I, I really like the article by Waiko. So, yeah, I think this one just look for technical symbols. Maybe here, if it touches this region, you gotta be careful. You gotta start uh, slowly uh, taking out your positions lah here. Okay. Now, uh, some I think also somebody asked me about Singapore SSB. SSB is only 3.8%, right? Okay. Now, I think the SGX ETF is going to give you higher than uh, a nice dividend, better than 3.8. Nah. Okay. In other words, uh, the multiple, uh, the PE multiple, uh, uh, the PE for the SGX index uh, is lower than the SSB, Singapore government bonds, in uh, the return. Okay. So as such, I don't find the SSB uh, a, a, a nice investment. Uh, okay. Whereas on the reverse side, the US market, right? The PE of the SPY, this is by Col Colton, uh, financially fit. Uh, he talked about this, right? I already talked, I gave the link and all that. 
uh, the first video I made was shitty lah. Very sorry about that. But the second one, I I deleted the video I made. Lah. So the PE ratio of the SPY is twenty six point three. This is the S and P five hundred uh, equivalent uh, of equivalent uh, ETF lah. The ETF that mimics the thing. There's a bit lah. There's VOO. There is SPY. Uh, pick your poison lah. Okay, some people say ah this one, the expense ratio is lower. The other expense ratio is higher. I don't give a hoot lah. Honestly speaking, it's not that much of a difference. If I were you, I pick one that is more liquid. So basically, twenty six point three lah. This one, right? I think the. I think the that what is EWS ah uh, Singapore ETF ah uh, this one MSCI, the PE ratio at the MSCI is only eleven point two one leh, and it's giving you a yield of six point eight two, right? I think this is somewhat mimics the Singapore index lah. So what does that mean ah? Uh? That means ah, uh, the interest this guy is giving you a better return than the SSB, okay? So if I were uh, you all an investor, I would be a bit. If I invest in the SSB, I know it's safe lah. So that means I'm looking for safety lah. Ah, uh, some of it should be SSB. I think some maybe if you want EWS right. If you like the Singapore index, okay. So what is inside the EWS? DBS, OCBC, or the banks, right? Ah, uh, C Limited. Wow, wow, I didn't know C Limited was inside. Singtel, Capital, this one, this one, this one, this one, Singapore Exchange and uh, Grab. So it's mo most of mostly the banks lah. So in fact, I won't recommend you to buy uh, the stocks here, the the EWS. I recommend you to buy these three index, these three stocks lo, if you want, right? Okay. But if you ask me, hey, uh, Robert, what do you think about this thing? Uh, honestly speaking, ah, uh, now the cheap thing is in the REITs, right? The CFA that uh, Master Leong recommended, in in my honest opinion, I am H O. Uh, that was a very good pick. Okay, that was a very good pick. I wouldn't FOMO the banks, lah. That's what I think. But if, if you ask me, comparing the banks versus the Singapore index, right? The Singapore index is definitely cheaper, because not the not the bank. Sorry, the SSB. The SSB is giving you about three point eight, right? So what you do is how to find the P. You take one, you divide by point zero three eight, the three point eight percent, right? So it's twenty six lah the P E for the SSB, and it's not growing lah. Well, we assume also this one doesn't grow, right? But this guy the P E ratio is eleven point two one. This guy is twenty six. Okay, as such, ah, uh, as such, I will be more willing, ah, uh, to take risk outside the SSB because the return is double, right? Okay, I'm more willing to take risk on the outside versus you ask me whether the SSB, okay? But on the SPY side, on the SPY side, uh, and the SPY side, okay, the PE ratio is already twenty six. It's expensive already. Okay, whereas uh, the PE for the treasuries, which is about five percent, I think the one year is five percent or two years. I forgot. I think is, I forgot. Uh, is it one year or two years? Uh, but is if it's five percent, uh, that means the PE is twenty. In other words, the treasuries, which is safe, is giving you a better return than the index. As such, I do believe that it's better to buy the uh, U.S. treasuries. Okay, and but I don't think it's good to buy the Singapore Treasuries. Okay, Singapore Treasuries because there are stocks out there that giving you better return. <coughs> okay, that's it. I'm not going to talk a lot about uh, this anymore. Also, I'm not going to talk too much about this, but I do believe. Um, these guys are giving you better returns, so I, 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 I'm not going to, uh, yeah, okay. In fact, ah, uh, I believe Singapore now the REITs are quite cheap, lah, for me, lah. I think. Okay. So I'm willing to take risk, ah, uh, if the I'm willing to take the risk, ah, uh, right. I'm willing to take the risk, ah, uh, if if 
the odds is good lah, right? You know what I mean, not? You, whenever you go casino and play ah, the tasia and all that, right? The odds is always bad for you, you know. Okay. But the 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 odds is always bad for you. So you want to find with good odds lah. You want to gamble with good odds. Gambling is okay, but you gamble with good odds lah. Remember that lah. I think that's it, right? Yeah, I think that should be all for today lah. Oh, somebody mentioned this lah, the TNX lah. It goes up to 4.32 and all that stuff. So now it's testing again, this, this, this resistance, right? Now, this is, I think, the final test. If this breaks down, uh, that means uh, it's a triple top. In other words, uh, it's not strong enough. In other words, uh, the market still believe that the government is going to cut. Okay? But if this breaches, if this breaches above 4.3, then the trend, the upwards trend still holds and the stock market may start to drop. The US stock market may start to drop. Okay? So I don't want to talk about the Singapore stock market. Singapore stock market is uh, history idea. I talked already about that just now. Uh. So I think this one, it could be the beginning of the end of the rally la, in the US stock market. Okay. Is it going to be permanent? I don't think so. La. I think it's going to pull back la, or correction. La. In fact, I think, honestly speaking, there is really nothing to buy di la, in the US stock market. La. For me, is I see the stock market, eh, not much things to buy. La. Very little stuff. Very little. Very, very, very little. Okay, very, very little. All this O I bought at what? Very low prices, man. I remember last time I bought O, very low prices. NNN, I bought also very low price. Last time I bought 36, uh, 37, uh, that I sold at 40. Micron AT and three wow. SMIC Tesla UPS Tesla move ah Tesla came down ah am I bullish Tesla uh, no not so lah okay I already said I was fifty fifty ah that's it for today lah I don't talk too much already lah. Nothing also to talk about. Oh, link rate. Ah, link rate. Link rate, link rate, link rate. Let's see how it goes. 33.65. Nice. My next target is 31. Uh. If it goes to 31, I think I'm going to buy a heavy amount. Uh. I'm going to take some of my retiree, that one, and put it in link rate. Uh. My retirement fund and put it in link rate. Why am I so bullish on link rate? Uh? It just gives you a very nice dividend, ma. Why, 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 why you all need to ask the the question? The dividend is not bad. The gearing is low. Um, I believe that uh, the worst already has happened lah for for Hong Kong. La. I don't think there can be any worse lah for Hong Kong. Okay. Am I putting all my money into Ling? Not really lah. I'm just putting some of them. No, I'm not gonna put all my money into one stock or whatever. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not that, that the kind of person who do who do that. I got family to feed, right, and all that. I got risk, you know. I got. I got. I got family to feed. Anything happen, uh, I must be responsible. You must be responsible, you know, for your family. You cannot anyhow put your, all your money into one stock. You must always diversify, right? Okay. You must always diversify. Different case if you are single, uh. Okay, different case if you are single and young, you can risk a lot more. 
But for us old people, we cannot risk that much anymore. La. Right? We cannot risk that much anymore. We, we, we want to be more uh, prudent. Okay? That's it for today. Thank you very much.